uh, take everything that anyone ever tells you with a grain of salt and go find out for yourself. You know, when you hear about what it is like in another country, go there. Mm. Unless it's an open war zone, go. Mm. If you're a woman, take a partner. Don't go alone. Safety first, is f- of course. But, you know, start learning to, to be more independent and think for yourself. Welcome to another episode of the Ben Rollins Blueprint Podcast. I'm your host, Ben Rollins. I want them. Today is going to be an epic and great episode. Some people may say controversial, but uh, we're going to find out. Today, I have a very interesting and special guy. He's a financial expert. He was a, um, a teacher before and a, an artist as well. So please, ladies and gentlemen, please join me. Welcome the one and only Mr. Medhani. The clay, man. How you doing today, bro? I appreciate that, Ben. I appreciate <laughs> that. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here <coughs> again. Uh, I, I really enjoyed our time together, and I'm happy to do it again. Hopefully, it'll be the first of you know several episodes in the future, but I appreciate you for having me. Oh, man. I really appreciate you for coming again. You know, the last time we had issues with the audio, and that's my fault. I apologize for that. Thank you for coming back, man. Yeah, but this guy never lets complications get him down. He uh, never slows down. He never gives up. He gets the job done. And I respect that. Oh, man. I really appreciate you, bro. You know, some people will not even show up again. They'll be like, damn, you just wasted my time. But Yeah. Conversation was too good. We got to run it back. Oh, yeah, The man. people need to hear what we were talking about. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Let's just bounce back. And, man, how was, how was it like growing up? So uh, I was born to parents from Eritrea. It's a small country in northeast Africa right next to Ethiopia. Yep. Both of my parents were born back home. They met each other here in the States. My father came for education purposes. My mom came to get away from the war, Mm -hmm. and then they ended up meeting here. And uh, growing up, you know, in my home, I was raised in um, you know traditional Eritrean values, more conservative. Mm -hmm. You know, staying true to your culture, eat our food, drink our coffee. You know, when they go out to special events, they don't find babysitters. They just take me there, and I sleep on the chair till two in the clock in the morning. You know, it was a good time. I enjoyed my upbringing. I enjoyed my upbringing, and I really am grateful to them because. They started taking me back to Eritrea when I was four. Mm. So unlike a lot of Americans, I had my first passport when I was four years old, mm. before I was even in kindergarten. Wow. So, you know, we would fly overseas, you know, land in Europe, you know, the Middle East on our way to Eritrea. And it, it just, just, I didn't know it at the time, but the exposure to different cultures, even if it's just in the airport or even if it's just for a day at a time on my layovers, it, it had an effect on me. It had an effect on me. Wow, that's pretty impressive. You know, when we hear about Eritrea, especially us in West Africa, we hear about war, dictator, like the country is always under like some chaotic environment or chaotic moment. Mm. So how was it like going back? Did you experience something like that or was nothing? It's nothing like that. Really? Nothing. I I didn't even know that that we were uh, a dictatorial nation until I was like later years in high school. My uh, shortly... After the last time I went there, Mm -hmm. and because I started reading about this stuff and seeing it on the news, I could just pick up my phone, get the calling card to call back home. I know you know what I'm talking about with a a gazelle on it. Uh And I call my cousin. I'm like, yo, is is this true? Are we harboring, you know, Russian conspiracy, like like, like Russian forces? uh, Are we we starving our people? No, bro, no. Everybody's hungry. (laughs) <laughs> the, the people in the people in the government are broke too, man. We just we just we're a poor country. They're not they're not doing anything to us. There's uh, police don't cost. It's the same as when you were here last. Just we're broke. Mm-hmm. You know, like we want to leave, but just because there's nothing really for us here, because the West is squeezing us. Mm-hmm. All the economic sanctions that don't let us leverage what little wealth we have. It's the same thing they do in West Africa. Mm-hmm. So like I'm at the point now where I hear. Stories about what people are like in other countries, what a regime is like in another country. I always take it with a grain of salt because you don't know unless you're there on the ground. You don't know. Yeah, you don't know true. for sure. Like there has to be like what you see on social media, like TikTok, what's happening in Gaza. That's real. Mm. There's just thousands and thousands of, of posts from hundreds, if not thousands of people sharing it all the time. And then when you see that 
and you hear what the institution says, it's the opposite of what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. Imagine that same situation, but in all these other countries, there's no visual. And the problem is most of the times we want to get our news or information from the establishment without really knowing the source of that information. Get your information from independent media outlets and pick more than one and do your research and, com and form your own opinion. There's power in information, and you better believe that they've been controlling what you see mm. and controlling a narrative around the world. Fift even 20 years ago, mm -hmm. l l l maybe less, 15 years ago, some of the stuff they say on the news, yeah. people will believe it wholesale because there's no other resource. Yeah. There's no other mode of, of finding out. Now we have the technology to find out and then get it out to the people. Mm -hmm. People have always found out the truth, but then they just disappear. Mm. And the problem is people don't want, a lot of people don't want to be controversial today because they feel like if they say something crazy, they're going to be canceled. And a lot of people are scared of being canceled today. They're just like, no, man, yeah. I don't want to be, I don't want to cancel, I don't want to cancel myself for saying something controversial. Well, you, you can only be canceled if someone else controls your life to begin with. Mm. That's a really powerful statement right there. And a lot of people don't think from that perspective, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean... A hundred years ago, 90% of Americans owned their own business and only 10% had jobs. Mm. You know, people owned their shoe shop and their apartment was on top of it. People grew food and sold it. People had a grocery store and, you know, their apartment was on top of it. Mm. They didn't even have, a lot of them didn't even have employees. They were their own employees. They just made enough to make a living. But the problem with that... Now, it's uh, the other way around now. Yeah, the problem with that is some people are going to be asking themselves like, hey... If you're building a culture of just producers, who is going to be the consumer? Because the culture now is just like, oh, everyone is a consumer. Well, you can and ask the same question. How can we sustain this society where everyone is a consumer and no one is producing? Mm. Only a handful of are producing. That's unsustainable. Yeah. Because if the grocery store is empty, where are you going to get your food? That's a problem. In, in, in six weeks, people are eating each other. Wow, man. Whereas if everyone is a producer, you go in your backyard and start picking cucumbers and apples and you're fine. Like, whatever. I don't have someone to take my ingredients to to make a pie for me. I can just <laughs> go on the internet and figure out how to bake a pie. Like, with the right technology, like the internet is free information is disseminated everywhere. Everyone could learn how to produce. But we've been conditioned to be a consumer. Mm. To be dependent on the system so that the system can control you. Wow. I want to take this conversation now and make a U-turn. Yeah. To some yeah. You got me started early. <laughs> no, I think we're going to go deeper on that. But I want to go. You, you suggested a book you, that I should read. Um, what's the name of the book again? Behold a Pale Horse. What made you tell me to do that? So, like, I was telling you a lot about uh, the stuff that we talked about and yeah. we'll probably get into. Uh -huh. A lot of it sounds so sensational. Yeah. So outlandish. Uh -huh. Where are you getting all of this? Yeah. And over a long period of time, I'd read something here. I'd read something there. I'd watch a documentary about one subject. And then I would see a recommendation of this book pop up mm -hmm. more than once. Behold a Pale Horse. Yeah. Behold a Pale Horse. It's like a basic breakdown for all, like, the biggest uh, globalist conspiracy mm -hmm. theory. It's yeah. only a theory if it's not real, but, yeah. you know, a, th a conspiracy theory is something that's not proven to be real. A conspiracy is a charge you get in court. Mm. Don't get much realer than that. I'm sorry. I didn't quite catch that. Ain't nobody <laughs> talking to you, Siri. Shut up. See, the government get mad at me already. They, they're listening. They're listening. <laughs> wow, that was so funny, bro. <laughs> Anyways. But I the re you asked me, I, wanted to, I didn't answer your question. You asked me why I recommended that book to you. Yeah. Number one, I told you a bunch of stuff, and I'm not the type of person that expects you to believe me. Uh -huh. I'm just sharing what I've learned and what I've read and what I think. Yep. I'm one person. I'm not trying to start a revolution or anything. I'm just sharing what I know. Mm -hmm. And if you don't believe me, here's a piece of literature that's a good starting point. Yep. And whatever, this, the book has like a lot of big subjects in it. Like how many things did you read about that could be their own book? Yeah, there are a lot of things, but my mind was like, whoa, what the hell am I doing, bro? This is incredible. Go back and read it yeah. and pick a section and look up books on just that subject and you'll find endless literature on it. Wow. And I want to ask, I want to, um, from that book, I had a lot of things about like the elite group and the um, the new world order, how they're trying to change a lot of things in society, especially bad control. 
And I was blown away when I heard something like, oh, they're trying to use like homosexuality and they're targeting black population and the Latino community and stuff like that. I was like, man, there's something right here. And sometimes when you hear something like that, you'll be like, oh, should I voice an opinion or should I just sit quiet? Because you voice an opinion today, you'll be like, no, this guy don't know what he's doing. But the problem now in the world is people are not going to want to do what I did reading the book to really understand some certain things about life because they're scared of being controversial. So what are you going to say to someone who is like intrigued about the topic but is scared of speaking up? Ask yourself, why? Why do you want to know about it? Why do you want to share it? What's your motivation? Mm. Why does it matter what people think about your opinion? Mm. Are you try? Is your goal to change theirs? Shouldn't be. Mm. Because freedom is just that. Do I believe that there's an agenda to try and, and steer the majority of people in specific communities to a certain lifestyle where they can't reproduce? Absolutely. Does that, does that mean that I think everyone who lives that lifestyle should be exterminated? Of course not. Of course not. Yeah, so what drew, what drew you to that, that um, particular topic? Like aliens, um, this, uh, the New World Order and stuff like that. What really made you go towards that direction to really understand what's going on in this world today? I used to love politics. Mm. I was always interested in it. And the more years went by, the more I realized, like, nothing's getting better. It just keeps getting worse. And I have my side. I used to be very liberal. Oh. And, mm. and, you know, the right is the enemy. But, but <laughs> I was a reasonable person. I didn't attach my identity completely to it. Like, one of my best friends... Someone I've known the majority of my life, almost 30 years. He's a staunch Republican, always has been. But it never stopped us from being friends just because we don't have the same political alignment mm -hmm. or the same opinions about you know people's lifestyles or what they should and shouldn't do doesn't mean we can't be friends because we're people. Mm. Human beings have a vast majority more things in common than we do apart. The people whose lifestyles I don't approve of, I still share more in common with them than I do with those elitist establishments that you mentioned. Mm. They want us, to, every time we hate each other and we fight each other, they're happy. They're winning. Mm. They're, excuse me. Their worst nightmare is us figuring out that we have more in common than others. I'm just not like, I have my opinion, but I'm not telling people they shouldn't live that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I just think pe children, first of all, children need to be left alone. Yeah, and that's the truth. Like, you don't own your child... I literally made this person from my flesh and blood, mm -hmm. okay? Whether you believe in God, the universe, or nature itself, whatever it is, I was assigned by it to create this person. Mm. So they're more mine than they'll ever be yours. And I won't own them forever. When they're an adult, they're going to do whatever they want. Yeah, and that's the truth. In, you know, like Disney, the typical example today is suffering today because they didn't really understand who really have the power and the, with the remote control. So dumb. Yeah, they thought the kids had the power, but they, we just realized that the parents have powers now, and now the stock is going down like crazy. That's why they're writing laws to try and take parental power away, parental rights. Mm -hmm. Like some schools, like if your child, uh, you know, is wants to change their gender, mm -hmm. you know, if their gender is fluid, they're required to not tell the parents. They can't tell their parents about it. And they have to affirm their gender and support the child's delusion. Yeah, because my problem, my problem with that is this: like, when children are growing up, they don't really know what's right and what's wrong. They don't know shit. And the moment you keep like just putting that thing on their face, they're gonna just want to do it. No, and like, they no, end up I, regretting. I really want to emphasize that they don't know shit. Mm, yeah, they don't know anything. And I don't mean that as an insult. Yeah. I mean that in just the most honest way. They're innocent. Yeah, they're really innocent. Like from a from the. F Third trimester of pregnancy, up to age seven, children are in uh, their brain is is in a a state called a theta wave, theta mm. brain wave. Yeah, you have the alpha brain wave, the theta brain wave, and then the conscious brain wave. That's when you're awake. Mm. Alpha is when you're asleep. Theta, as an adult, when you're falling asleep, that drowsy area where you can't tell if you're awake or asleep, right when you're about to go out, you're in the theta state. Yeah. You're in that state all the time from the third trimester in the womb all the way through age seven because your brain is a blank hard drive just mass downloading information. That's why little kids, when they're playing games and 
pretending. They think it's real. Mm. They don't know what's real is and what isn't. So if they say, I'm a girl, I, am a, I really am a girl, they don't know what's real yet. They're still imprinting reality on them. It's the child's or the parent's job to be the guardian, to safeguard them from danger during those times and teach them what is real and what isn't so that when the, the stone or the concrete sets in their mind, they have a good framework. Mm. And that's part of the agenda, though. They're trying to reduce the population, world population, by imprinting this um, left... I don't want to call names, but, I mean, we're, we're going to say how it is. They're trying to do, like, homosexuality and stuff like that. I mean, if you're grown up... But just think about it. Think about it. Look at, look at the trend. Uh -huh. Go by generation. It's We're in Generation Alpha, Gen Z, uh, Millennial, X, mm -hmm. and the... What's the generation before Gen X called? Boomers? The boomers and before them. Uh, I don't really know the generation. Well, we'll start with the boomers. Yeah. The boomers, like, less than 5% of them were LGBTQ+. Plus. Yeah. A small, you know, a good percentage of them were probably hiding, you know, from fear because, mm -hmm. oh, it's not safe. But not the, to the level that we're at now. Mm. It's like increases in Gen X to, like, 8%. Millennials, it's like 12%. Gen Z is, like, 16%. Now it's almost 30, almost a third of all Generation Alpha. Damn, that's a lot. You're telling me, and people always say, they were all hiding during the boomers. No. You're telling me that over a third of the people, one out of every three people, okay, during that, uh, the, during that era was in the closet. Nah. Nah, bro. That's not possible. The that's suicide rate would have been way higher. Yeah, that's not possible. I mean... If, if they're saying something like that, you know, like, we in Africa, it's a different situation going back there. Like, it's, Oh, yeah, it's not okay. Yeah, it's not okay. It's against the law, in it's, fact. You even go to jail, bro. And sometimes even... That's die. if they're being polite. They, some countries will, oh, you you know, they'll put you to death. Yeah, die by hanging. Like, to me, that's too extreme. Yeah, it's extreme, bro. Like, don't lock people up. Don't hang them. I'm not saying that. Yeah. Okay? Uh -huh. A free consenting adult... Someone who has their faculties, has had the opportunity to grow up in a normal household, right? Mm -hmm. Is free to make their decisions. When they hit those teenage years, if it's rough, okay. If you're sure, by the time you get to adulthood, then do what you want. But you do it when you're an adult, number one, mm -hmm. so that you can, you're actually responsible for your decisions. Because yep. if you regret it, no one's going to care. Yeah. But if it's who you are and what you really want to do, then you, more power to you. Just wait till you're an adult. So that you go through puberty, you grow into an adult body, and you have a chance to be sure, mm -hmm. to be certain. Because once you do it, especially, like, if you're homosexual, then the consequences are only social. Mm. Right? If you're trans, there's no going back. Whoa. That's why they want to, there's the, 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 and that's a big distinction. Opinions about lifestyle and what the New World Order wants, why they're manipulating it. The worst lies have truth hidden in them. That's why... It's hard to have this conversation with people because they get so emotionally invested in it, mm. you know? And then someone's like, well, you wouldn't be like that if they're talking about racism. It's like, yeah, what? I don't care. Bring it on. You can have a... It, that's why I'm a, a functioning and, and level-headed adult. I will sit and have a conversation with somebody who can't stand me and thinks I'm not even a human being. And I will look forward to the opportunity to calmly and coolly and collectively eviscerate them intellectu intellectually. Mm. Wow, man. And I will like talk to them like they're my friend. And my they they will lose their mind over my level of composure because I'll have more than them, thereby proving them them wrong. Yeah. That's man. why that's why I don't believe that you should lock people up who live that lifestyle or execute them because there are there are people mm -hmm. who are adults who live their entire life in that lifestyle and they are satisfied and happy with it. There are people who choose to be that way. That's who they are. And you should be free to be who you are. That's just a uh, that's just a basic universal law, and we'll get to the aliens in a bit. They yeah. they have they talk about stuff like that, <laughs> like it's 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 like they should you should be who you are, but just leave my kids alone. Oh yeah, that's true. Man. I would tell them to have their own kids and, and raise them their own way, but they can't. Mm. This is just a tip of an iceberg, man. I want to go back now to really understand how you got to this the point where you are today. So I want to ask you, man. Oh yeah, I'd be sorry, guys. I'd be ranting. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. Um, you were a teacher at one point. Yes, sir. What made you get into the teaching profession in the first place? So I went to art school to be an artist. So I have a degree yeah. in painting and printmaking. Uh -huh. You know, that's where I learned more empathy for alternative lifestyles because I went to art school and everybody's like different. Yeah. So I realized these are just people, man. They're living the life that they want to. And, you know, 
There's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. I should be secure enough in myself to be friends with someone who's different from me. Yep. And, you know, you do what you want, man. Just don't tell me to do it. And if it's about to get crazy, at least warn me so I can, like, leave. Yeah. But um, I went to art school, got a degree in painting and printmaking. I'm a classically trained oil painter. You know, DM me if you want to do for some commissions. Yeah. Um, when I got out of school, though, I realized that, that I couldn't find work for that. It was just an expensive hobby. Wow. I became a junk hauler and a truck driver when I got out of school. So I did that for two years. Mm-hmm. And, like, I was the only person at my job, including my boss and the owner who had a college degree. Whoa. And I was hauling junk and driving a dump truck. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. It's, it's funny now. But um, uh, about a year and a half into that, my high school art teacher, she's the only reason I even got into college. Mm-hmm. I graduated with like a 1.8 GPA. Yep. Pretty bad. I got rejected by every college I applied to except Virginia Commonwealth University. Shout out Rams. Go Rams. Um, they're one of the best art schools in the country. And when you're applying for their art program, your portfolio carries more weight than your grade point average. Whoa. So she helped me build a portfolio that stood out enough for them to accept me. So I got rejected from some of the most basic low-end four-year colleges, but then I got accepted into one of the best art schools in the nation. She saw something in me that I didn't see in myself, and I'm forever indebted to her. She changed my life. She's the reason... She's the, That was the first domino to a more educated version of myself, mm. a more confident version of myself. I'm still working on it, but it started with her. So she, her health was failing. Shout out to Mr. Santis. You're the GOAT. Wow. Um, she, she, her health, she was struggling with her health at the time. She had to take a lot of time in and out of class. And she asked me to substitute her class. She said like, you know, I don't want their instruction to suffer. I want to substitute who knows this, the, the material can actually help them. You know it. It's easy for you. In fact, you're overqualified to teach it. And you know, you're young. They'll, they'll probably listen to you. They probably think you're hip and cool. You know, you're, you're cool. You're 20 something. Just, just go do it, man. Yeah. It's, be- it's better than the job you're doing now. Okay. At least you'll be clean. You won't smell bad. I'm like, damn. <laughs> All right, you know, I, I want to clap back, but you're you're right. You're absolutely right. Uh-huh. And I did it, and I fell in love with education. I fell in love with helping other people. I fell in love with helping my students, and I um, went on a journey there and did that for 10 years. Mm, you did it for 10 years. And then what made you stop, though? Money. Money. What do you mean by money? Um, I was broke. Broke? The way I grew up, the way I grew up, when I became a teacher and got health insurance, mm-hmm. I was like, I thought I was rich. I was like, Man, I can go to the dentist. Don't talk to me, man. I can fix my teeth. I got money. But I didn't understand what wealth or financial independence was at all. Mm. So, you know, as the years went on, I bought a car and then I bought my mom's house. And then she became dependent on me financially for the most part. Not completely, but more so. And I realized, oh, I'm not making a lot of money. I'm I'm still broke. I make decent money on paper, but I'm still broke because I can't afford to build a life. I can't build on where I'm at. I'm just working really hard just to maintain where I'm at. Mm. I couldn't get married and take care of another woman Yeah, because I'm not going to leave my mom behind. Whoa. I'm not doing that. I'm the youngest in a family, an African family. I, I can't. Yeah. It's my job. I have to take care of her until she dies. Yeah, man. But, and then don't forget about kids. So I was like, I got to, you know, something has to change. Then the pandemic came. All the kids went home. They froze our pay to pay for the technology and computers that they would take home so they could learn online. And then, you know, you saw how they were talking crazy about nurses and teachers and stuff. Yeah. It's like, okay, I'm not doing this no more. And then that was that was the point where my understanding of the system as a whole, especially in education, my I was started to gain more clarity. And I'm like, I'm actually causing more harm than good here. Because I would always tell my students on the first day of school, it was like, one thing I'll never do is lie to you. Whoa. Never. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to tell you a truth you don't want to hear, but I'm going to tell you what you need to hear. Because I care about you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the years went on, and I realized there were some things I was teaching them that were a lie. And I was going back on my own word, and I was like, ah. That felt, I felt gross after that. So I didn't did, like it. Did you tell them you, you lied to them and tried to adjust that? Or you were just like, oh, this is a curriculum. I just got to do or say what I have to say. Oh, no, I'm, what? no, I'm telling them. Of course I'm telling them. They'll tell me the, the, bad, the, the kids that struggle tell me school is bullshit. I'm like, you know, you're right. You're absolutely right. And they'd be surprised every time I agree with them. <laughs> and I would tell them, but you play video games, right? Yeah, yeah. You like to change the lo- rules or your skin, like what you're wearing, your your you know your mods, whatever. You like to change that stuff, right? Yeah. Can you change any of that before you beat the game? No. Y- you get it? 
Ooh. If you want to change the game, you got to beat the game first. Mm. I so, mean, like you, tr- you're teaching little kids. Like, was it middle school or high school? My first few years was high school, and then the last eight years was elementary. Like, so most of my years were with younger children. And how are they taking that, though? They're more capable than you know. Really? Well, what? Yes. Wow. Yes. They're paying attention. They have the internet, by the way. Uh-huh. Don't forget. Yeah. They have access to more information than we ever did. That's true. So why why you're saying something? The fact checking it. To make they can. Sure, yeah. Make sure it's right. And cool. they're like, damn, you, you're right. You didn't lie to me. Mm-hmm. I told you, bro. I stand on what I say. <laughs> if, I'm, if it's a lie, it's because I was wrong. Uh huh. But the thing is, if you're trying to like say the truth and telling students that, oh, school is not good or something like that. I'm oh, I didn't say school is not good. Uh huh. I said the way school is designed is not good. Oh, the way school is designed is not good. Do learning you, is everything. So do you think like some teachers might have heard that and like, oh, nah, they disagree with this guy. They don't like him because of I that. I never tell them. I mean, like, if a yeah. stu- Ben, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Have you ever seen The Matrix? The Matrix? The yeah. movie? Yeah, I think I've watched the movie. You know when but they go... That was a long time ago, though. You remember when they would go into The Matrix to save people? Yeah. And the people who are locked in and think it's real can't be saved yeah then they're locked in so hard that the agents can take over them they become the agent and that's why the agents can how the agents can go anywhere in the matrix they want at any moment mm-hmm. programming yeah you, you say the wrong thing to the wrong person they turn into an they they behave it, the only thing that's different is they don't change their appearance mm-hmm. but you know they'll be talking to you normally and go, oh mr anderson mm. You can't say that. That's, yeah. you know, discrimination. Like, you know, like, th- th- some people are too hard to reach. I would test boundaries with them just to see how they'd react. Mm-hmm. And there's always a few teachers that could see. And, like, that's who I would, like, eat lunch with and hang out with and talk with. Mm-hmm. But even they didn't really, well, they didn't, very few, if any of them, could ever go all the way. Mm-hmm. Like, when the pandemic came and vac- vaccines started rolling out. Mm-hmm. You know, I lost a couple friends. <laughs> Had a good friend of mine. You know, he's a super liberal. Whoa! But it's like, you know, some things require you know more of a liberal approach, and a lot of things require a more conservative approach. And usually, the state of the society at the time dictates what you need more of. Yeah. Right now, we need to be more conservative. Mm-hmm. It's a little too crazy out here. Yeah. But when the vaccines came, he was just like, "Trust the science. Trust the science. You don't trust doctors. You don't know anything about health." And I'm like, "Look, bro." You eat frozen macaroni and cheese and drink Diet Coke every single day. I don't think I've ever seen you eat anything that didn't come out of a plastic wrapper. Whoa. You can't tell me about health. You don't even know how to take care of your own body. <laughs> If you ran 100 meters, you'd drop dead in four, at 40. Whoa. Don't, don't tell me what to put in my body. Man. He did not like that. Really? At all. But that was, that was hot, though. <laughs> That was really hard. Yeah, I don't I, think a lot of people are really emotionally strong to handle something uh, like that. I mean, I pay attention. Yeah. I pay attention. It's like I grew up eating a lot of ultra-processed food and messes with your behavior. Mm. Messes with your brain chemistry, your gut health, your mood, everything. Go on a raw whole food diet. Don't eat anything that has more than three ingredients mm. for a month and look what happens. Eat steak, fish, eggs, You know, fruit and vegetables, drink only alkaline water, and watch what happens to you. What's going to happen? Your skin will clear up. Your stress will go down. You'll sleep better. Mm. You'll recover faster from training. I think I got to try that. Your body is designed to heal itself. You just have to, you just have to fuel it properly. Wow. That's you, you know, a sports car is not going to be optimal if you put, you know, like pine saw in it. You're supposed to put gasoline in it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, if you put orange juice in your car, the, <laughs> the car is just going to stop. <laughs> But, man, so you're teaching and you, you're seeing how the establishment works. Yep. And you don't really agree with some of the things that, that is going on. Like, at that point, what, would you, what was your mindset like? It was depressing. I mean, I was, you know, keeping, keep, I was keeping the good fight up, you yeah. know, continuing to do my thing, uh-huh. work, but... I just It was draining me. And I loved the kids I worked with. I liked a lot of people I worked with. It was like, 
If they were paying me oh, six figures, a hundred thousand or more, I probably yeah. would have never stopped. Whoa! But now that I've been doing what I do now, I realize six figures, a hundred thousand a year is not enough. Yeah, especially with inflation, the way the ec- economy is going, yeah. I would have been. It would have hurt me that much more when it all fell apart. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So I don't question God's plan for me. Oh, uh, man! So did that make you will it go into? to understand some of the things or the hidden secret of the establishment to really have a wider view about life and some different perspectives. It did. And like, I always like to watch documentaries and that's where the beginning of my, um, uh, journey into deeper. I don't know what's the term. I don't want to use conspiracy theory cause it's only a theory if it's not real. Uh-huh. If it's real, it's just a conspiracy. But into just more historically accurate information. Mm -hmm. I'm a documentary junkie. Mm -hmm. I love watching them. And I would watch more and more of them. Like I watched one several years back on HBO called Exterminate All the Brutes. And it talks about the global history of racism. Mm. Like how it started, how it metastasized and mutated and started the transatlantic slave trade. And I was like, wow. I never heard the whole story it's just a false construct. It's not real. Mm. It's not a real thing. By the way, you know how they talk about the Nazis being the eugenics, the eugenicists, that they were just one of the member states in the eugenicist like, room. You know where the conference for eugenics was held? No. In England. They invented it. Huh. They're the worst. Perpetrator. Don't believe me? Go to the British National Museum... National, uh, the, the British History Museum. Mm-hmm. Nothing in there is British. It's all African and Middle Eastern and oh, yeah. Indian, and it's all the shit they stole from countries they looted and, and raped and pillaged. Yeah, bro. And they didn't even have the they had the nerve to keep everything. We'll set you free, but that big ass eight pound diamond we stole from you, we're gonna keep that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that that's really messed up. I mean, I want to go into something now because I remember the last time when you came here, you said you had an encounter with alien, with an alien. So I wouldn't call it an encounter. Uh-huh. It's technically more of a UFO sighting. Oh, UFO! Because they were just—I just saw something, and I it like I couldn't make sense of what I saw. And uh-huh. using logic, when I looked at what I was seeing, I was like, like that has to be either the these are alien craft or. The government is working on reverse engineering alien technology, and they're test driving that shit. Oh yeah, and now after after reading that book, the book is you um this thing you recommended, I kind of on um had like a wider view or what a perspective when it comes to something like alien and the new world order and stuff like that. But I want to ask you, like, do you really believe that? This alien stuff is real. Because some people are watching now, they're just like, nah, that thing ain't real, stuff like that. Well, let me just... I'll start with a statement, and then I'll tell you how I logically came to it. Okay. Like, it's dangerously arrogant to think that we're the only intelligent species in this entire universe. Hmm. It's, in fact, I think it's mathematically irresponsible to suggest that there aren't aliens, let alone intelligent species of aliens. It's absolutely... You think God only made life in one world, on one pale blue dot, in an endless sea of, of stars? No. Nope. No, no. You think there's so little of God? No. There's, there are a lot of galaxies. So that, that's the math. Yeah. So even if it's a one in a trillion chance of an intelligent species out there, yep. our galaxy alone, it's a lower medium-sized galaxy, has anywhere between 200 billion and 400 billion stars. Hmm. Okay. The stars in our galaxy average a number of nine planets per star. Whoa. So what's 400 billion times nine? Oh, my God. <laughs> Bruh, that's a lot. That's a lot of planets out there. Nine times two is 18. What's 18 times two? That's 20, 30. That's, no, that's, that's 38, 36. Wait, 18 times two? I don't know, man. I don't be doing math. <laughs> I didn't pass algebra one till twelfth grade on my third try. I'm using a calculator. But but look at me now, teacher, math teacher. I won't name names, but I'm not gonna have a calculator on me. I got one in my pocket and on my wrist. Uh, what was it? Four hundred times nine. That's three point six trillion planets uh-huh. in our galaxy. Yep. So if it's one in a trillion, there's at least three super advanced civilizations just in our galaxy. You know how many galaxies we found? Nope. 200 billion. That's a, 
Man. Several of which are four or five times bigger than ours. Galaxies that have, you know, a trillion stars in one galaxy. So there's thou there's there's millions, if not billions, of intelligent species out there. Wow. Whose uh, whose level of advancement is ranges like a type one civilization is a civilization that can that can harness the power of their planet, their geological power, free energy. A type two civilization can harness the power of a star, their sun. Hmm. Type three can harness the power of their whole galaxy. Wow. And then, like an interplanetary s- s- society or civilization, can go from one planet to another. Interstellar can travel from one star to another, and intergalactic can go from one ga- galaxy to another. So was was that was that what made you really understand that? Oh, probably aliens are real. Uh, what do you mean? What made me understand? Um, after knowing that our God is so um, this and big, and He can make a lot of galaxies. So probably aliens can be existing in one of those galaxies. They have to, yeah. Really? They have to. They're there. I mean, there's uh, honestly there's evidence that they they come here frequently, and a bunch of them live here. Yeah, I even like on the the book you you recommended. <laughs> I even had one of the encounter that the president of America back then was it President Eisenhower had a meeting with with an alien, and after that meeting he had a <sighs> heart attack or something. I was like, wow, that's some some real stuff right there. Yeah, man. I mean, like, the, if you think about it, as far as evidence to support aliens existing or sightings, is a spoil of riches. Uh-huh. Like, I'm going to Google it right now. I'm going to ask Google. How many UFO, UFO sightings have there been in the last 50 years? What does Google say? Their articles. Uh, nothing specific. There's just articles. I don't want to read them. But the last time I saw it, yep, it was thousands. Yeah, I mean, like even the news. Sometimes it's just like UFO sightings and stuff like that. But the thing is, people still don't believe. They just like nah. People yeah. only believe what they can handle. Yeah, and that's that's frightening though to know that some uh, the, the aliens can just come o- and just overthrow us one day. <laughs> <laughs> If they wanted to, yeah, it would have already happened. There's, um, I read a book recently. The title of it was so outlandish that it made me curious. Whoa. I just wanted to listen to it. I told you about it. It's called the extra uh, the extraterrestrial species almanac. Mm. And then I got the audio book and I saw how long it was. It was like six and a half, seven hours. I was like, there's that many? <laughs> no way. Wow. And I listened to the whole thing and I'm just like, whoa. There's a whole Galactarian alignment, like a government. They're, they have their own belief systems. They have some that are believe in something called service to self. They're the, the ones that are evil, use uh, undermonic Uh, energy instead of harmonic frequency energy mm-hmm. they're telepathic wow they can speak to your mind so they'll make you think that you're listening to god or going insane so if that's the case man uh, we got to be at ease uh, aliens are not going to overthrow us anytime soon you're, the key is to be confident and, and sure of yourself because any dark species is going to use like hatred or fear or doubt against you You know, they say, that's the devil, that's the devil. Yeah, well, it might not be directly devil, but it's definitely one of his, his you know, one of his servants. <laughs> yeah, but I think they have, like, some really advanced technology, though. If Well, I mean, to them, to them yeah. the religion and technology are the same thing. Really? There's no separation hmm. for them. A lot of them find that the, what they've what they know about creation is a gift given to them from God. Mm. And they have a specific blueprint for how it works. Whoa. And they have faith in it because it obviously works. Mm. Wow. That and for a, a, a species to have that type of advanced system, technology, communication, spirituality, conflict, war, and discrimination become useless, mm. become obsolete. So of course they don't take over us. 
Mm. They're just waiting for us to reach a higher le- enough level of consciousness to be brought back into the fold. We're dumb, ignorant monkeys to them. Wow. Man. Like, would you go try to convince a chimp to live in a house and drive a car? No. No, he's just going to rip your face off. <laughs> You're not even going to have a chance to even say one word. You're out. Yeah, you are. He doesn't. Know, he can't understand yet. Yeah, we they're waiting for us to get there. Mm. Wow. But the other ones, like the draconian reptiles, they're 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 trying to conquer the entire. They think they own the universe. They think they're the first species. They want to conquer and control everyone, and they rule planets secretly. Wow. Like this topic, when it comes to like aliens, Al- allegedly. <laughs> like. Topics like aliens, the new world order, I'm always like intrigued. I really want to understand what's really going on. And when I, when you look at the world today, especially there's a name that you always see popping around, left, right, left, right, like George Soros. They're like, oh, this guy is trying to do a lot of crazy things. And I'm glad he's an old man now, right now. Well, he's trying to pass it on to his sons. But are his sons the same way, though? They feel they think the same way, but they're not anywhere near as smart as him. Mm. So they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna fuck it up. Whoa, you think so though? I'm pretty sure. I mean, like you can you can you can predict that, but you never know. And you watch people's behavior and you see it. Like they have no self control. Yeah. And George Soros is very patient. Look at how old he is, and he's still fighting it. Yeah, bro. Most people his age just hang it up and give up. And the thing is, like, you see, the elites are just trying to control everybody, bro. That's that's messed up. And they go to this secret meeting. Maybe they work for the reptiles. And they go for this secret me- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. They go for these secret meetings. You remember the last time you asked me about, is it the Bilderberg Group? I can't remember. The oh, name you read about them then? Yeah, you I, heard about them? Yes, and they, they say they had the, the headquarters is in Hague or something? Yeah, the Hague. Where they, yeah, where they hold meetings and stuff. I was like, whoa. Told you that that's real. That's secrecy. like you can. That's documented. Mm-hmm. And the secrecy, you can't record anything. You can't like do anything, write anything. You just come, finish, and go. And anything that's done in secret, there gotta be some something crazy going. It, why? Why? Why the secrecy? Yeah. What are you hiding? That's true, bro. Who are you hiding it from? You know, after after reading that book, my mind was just. Exp- we just exploded. I'm just like, man, there's something more to the world than what we look at it. Yeah. And man, if you if you're someone who's scared, don't even go that direction because mm-hmm. you're gonna panic. I'm just saying to um telling the audience, like, if you're scared, don't even go that route because Oh yeah, you're not ready for that. If yeah. you, if this sounds too crazy for you to just keep walking in ignorance, you'll be all right. <laughs> just go ahead and walk into the mousetrap. You, 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 you'll be cool. <laughs> well, when when the trap snaps your neck, you you'll just you yeah. will be dead before you even know it. <laughs> yeah, man, that's so funny. But the truth is, you just gotta do your own research and your homework and be yeah. diligent with the actions you take today because life is so unpredictable. You never know what's gonna happen tomorrow. And knowledge is potential power. And knowledge you know, without action is useless. Yeah, potential power. So you gotta make sure you having you have the right. Um, information. Don't just get it from anybody. And that's why we have some kind of conversations like this. It's not like, oh, we're just saying what he's saying is right or what I'm saying is right. No, that's not what we're telling you. We just have, these are opinions. You got to go do your own due diligence and do your research and believe what you want to believe. There's a word for it. This is just discourse. Yeah, discussion. We're just giving, just playing around with opinions and ideas. You never know. It might be true. It might be wrong. But when you hear the truth, sometimes it makes sense. So think about it. Exactly. And man, let's move on to something else. I don't want to go to left or to right. So let's go. You left being a teacher. And what made you join the financial service industry? Well, before I was in the financial services industry, when I left the classroom, I got into a real estate investment. Mm-hmm. So I got into wholesaling real estate because I didn't have enough capital to buy property and start my own rental property or build a rental portfolio. Yeah. So I wanted to wholesale real estate so that I could learn about real estate investing with a less um, exposed method. Like I'm not, I don't own, I never own the property. So for those of you who don't know, if you wholesale a piece of real estate, what you do is you find an off-market property that the seller is willing to sell at a discount. Maybe they're underwater on their mortgage, a fire happened, it's an old investment property that's been vacant and they can't afford to maintain it, whatever it is. Yeah. Someone in a tight situation that needs to get rid of their property fast, they need cash for it and they're willing to let it go at a steep discount. I get it under contract with them for a hundred thousand mm. dollars. You know, I have sixty days to close on it, and wow. in, the, in in that sixty days, I find an investor 
who wants to buy it for cash, Whoa. right? Another investor who didn't want to do all the work of finding the deal. I get it under contract for 100. I sell it to him for 120. He puts another 50,000 into it, so he's all in for 170. Wow. And he flips it, right? When he fixes it, now it's worth 400. Dang. So even though he bought it for an extra 20 grand and put another 50 grand into it, he's all he's all in at 170. He sells it for 400. He just made $230,000 profit on it. Mm. He still got a great deal. But me, I get it under contract for 100. I sell it for 120. The title company gives me a check for 20,000 and then I go do it again. Mm. How how was that though? That sounds like pretty some some decent amount of money, bro. Yeah, but find the challenge is finding deals consistently. It's a lot of work. Mm. Like the marketing you have to do when you're cold calling, you, you build lists of of properties, a lot of market research. You have to dial at least two thousand numbers every day, mm. five days a week. Wow! And in a month, that gives you a really good chance at closing one deal every month. Whoa! Just one. And that'll get you anywhere from twenty to forty grand, or ten to forty grand. Excuse me. But man, that's that sounds like pff, you got to be really on top of your game. Yeah, when you're doing it on your own, you're doing like seven people's jobs. Mm. When you turn it into a business, I want to have four people cold calling for me. Mm -hmm. That's eight thousand dollars a day. Mm. When I'm by myself, if I get a property under contract, I don't have time to dial two thousand numbers a day anymore because now I have to get the paperwork signed. I have to send it the title. I have yeah. to start doing. I still have to start doing transaction coordination. Mm. So I get the paperwork into cont uh, into title. I'm talking to the title company rep uh, every other day, and I have to go to networking events and Facebook groups and start cold calling buyers now. I have to build my buyers list. Mm. I can't have a built up buyers list that I just can rely on because I haven't done a bunch of deals yet. Mm. So I have to do all of that. I'm doing acquisitions. That's the cold calling. That's yeah. three three minimum three people's jobs. I'm doing transaction coordination. That's another person's job. And dispositions is finding buyers. That's two people. And then uh, dispositioning the deal to close is also transaction coordination and dispositions manager. So that's between six, up to six or seven people's jobs by wow. yourself. Wow. That sounds like a lot, bro. The hardest is your hundred, first 100000 mm. Once you have enough money to uh, start hiring out and delegating the more time-consuming work. If I have those three people doing disp or acquisitions, calling sellers, no matter what, if, if I could be doing transaction coordination on three properties at once, they never stop dialing. Mm. Every single day they're dialing 2,000 numbers a day, every day, five days a week. I'm getting 8,000 dials a day, five days a week. They're filtering all the leads for me. So the only people I talk to now are qualified. They need me mm. so I can close now. I can focus all my energy on money-making activity. Yeah, to find a qualified client, it takes a lot of work and energy. A lot. And that's why this, those those investors are willing to pay an extra ten, twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 just for that. Yeah. So they don't have to do that. Yeah. Because they, they, they want to buy 5 to 20 properties every month. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. the good thing is down the line when I do have that business built, I don't have to pay someone else to find a deal for me. I have my own deal machine. Whoa. So all the best deals that come through my wholesaling business, mm -hmm. I don't sell them. I keep them. I can keep them. That's 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 a smart move right there. It takes longer, but you know, yeah. I know what to do with it now. But like for me, the re I went to do that first. Um, I closed some deals. You know, I learned a lot about entrepreneurship and real estate investing. But you know, it's an expensive uh, business, at least for uh, when you're just starting, because the systems cost money. Okay. The dollar is one hundred and thirty dollars a month. The data management system is $100 a month. The skip tracing to get people's phone numbers is like $50 a month. The customer relations management system, the CRM, is like $4,000 a year. Wow. So I'm spending a lot of money with no employees. Mm. So I couldn't get enough, generate enough revenue. I, 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 I extended myself too far, too thin, too early. I should have just done three, four, or five deals on my own, uh -huh. taking longer, and then get my first 100000 then start spending money. Mm. But, you know, that's how you learn. You learn through mistakes and failures. Yeah, that's so true. I came pretty close, though. Uh, I had one deal on the hook that I was going to make $100,000 on, mm. on my split. What happened? Oh, my God. This is a traumatic story for me. <laughs> I'll never forget this. But uh, it was in Jersey City. Mm -hmm. The property was brought to me by a real estate agent. Okay. This is the, one, the only mistake I made in the whole deal. I did everything perfectly, flawlessly, except this, right at the beginning. And I knew it 
but I just went along with it because I didn't want to lose the opportunity because I'd never had a deal that had this much money in it. Yeah. So uh, it was a real estate agent. He was bringing me a referral lead. I was going to pay him a fee for the lead. And mm-hmm. I told him I need to be direct to the seller. I need to talk to her myself. Yep. I have to be connected. He would not let me do that. He made himself the middleman between me and her. Whoa. And I told him, I was like, hey, look, man, you do retail transactions. I do investment transactions. It's different. I need to be direct to her so I can let her know what to expect. You know, I don't want her to be surprised. Trust is important. Yeah. And he just kept saying, no, you know, I can trust me. I've worked with investors. Da, 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 da. I can do it. And then eventually I was like, all right, man, if you can get her to sign it, okay. I figured that if he didn't tell her, if he didn't let me talk to her, she wouldn't sign it anyway. Yeah. So she, uh, he told me she wanted a million for it. I offered her a million. She came back and said, I want a million fifty thousand. It, it was even without repairs, it was already worth one point three. Oh. So I was like, oh. deal, a million fifty. You, you got me. <laughs> so I locked it up under contract for a million fifty thousand. The first few times I showed it to buyers, I couldn't really find anything. But then I ended up partnering with uh, another real estate investment company mm-hmm. in the Jersey area. They had done over $100 million in deals. They owned over $30 million in real estate. They were the real deal. Wow. And when I told them about what I had, they were like, oh, my Lord. <laughs> we, uh, um, they would not, they would call me every day. Wow. And the guy who I was talking was like, I have 30 deals that I'm working on right now. But you're my priority. I was like, well, why? He's like, this deal is worth more than all of them combined. Whoa. So, yeah, we're, we're doing this. And we have found a buyer. Uh, he put a $60,000 deposit. Just the deposit was sixty grand. Somebody was buying it for $1.331 million. Hmm. So it was a $260,000 fee. You know how I said buy it for a hundred, Yeah. sell it for one twenty. dollars Yep. We were buying it for $1.5 million and selling it for one point three one. So it was a quarter million dollar assignment fee. Whoa. Pay the real estate agent 50000 and me and the other company, a hundred thousand each. Dang. That was like, and I was at the point where I was almost out of money. I couldn't. I only saw myself paying for my systems for like a couple more months. Uh huh. So it was like I either close this, and all my debt is paid off, and I can hire people. Like I, I'm up. Or if it doesn't close, you know, if it's feast or famine. Wow. And it ended up being famine because he didn't prepare her properly. And then 40 people showed up to her house and started oh. a, a bidding war. 40 uh-huh. buyers went there. Uh-huh. More buyers showed up for that property than all the other deals I'd ever done. Whoa. I was so excited when that happened. And she refused to accept. She freaked out. Uh-huh. She didn't know what was going on. This is an auction. What is this? And she just never answered our calls again. Wow. She destroyed the whole deal. Wow. Oh, my God, bro. I will never forget that. I still have bad dreams about it. Was was that what made you to just go into insurance? Well, I didn't have a choice. I needed a part time gig because famine. Yeah. I'm in trouble now. Whoa. I need to pivot and figure out what I'm gonna do. I don't. How am I gonna pay my bills? Like I don't have a job. I I don't want to go back to work. But I thought this was a job. But I got introduced to this business, and when I learned more about it, I was like, ah, I needed a job with more reliable income. But then I learned about what it is and what potential it has and how well it ties into real estate. I was like, okay. I see you, God. I see what you're doing. Uh-huh. I, I'm not. I'm not. You, you don't want me to settle. Hmm. That's why you didn't let me be a six-figure earning teacher. That's why you didn't let me win in real estate right away. You have more for me to learn hmm. before, so that when I'm up, you want me to be at a level that I never would have believed I could be. Hmm. So it's like, all right, you know. And I figured out, you know, I can survive. I can find a way to survive because hmm. that's so, all you have to do. So, w- what are some of the challenges you face? In the financial industry, especially life insurance. Well, I mean, if I'm being honest, compared to wholesaling real estate, it's much easier. Really? Much easier. Because wow. my licensing mm-hmm. to get started and pay for my license is like 350 bucks total. Wow. Maybe a little less. And I don't have to cold call every day. Thousands of numbers. I don't have to do that. Mm-hmm. I just need 25 new phone numbers every week. <laughs> that was like, like that's it. They looked at me like, well, I mean, look, I don't know how you feel. You got to get 25 phone numbers a week. That, so that's it. Do you do door-to-door or? We don't door knock. We don't cold call. We don't buy leads. And then how did you get your leads, though? All organic. Organic. Meet people. Oh, meet. Go outside. And then the clients you service get referrals because mm. we take such good care of them. That's another thing I like about this company because we're trained to put the client first. Mm. And I respect that. I used to be a teacher. I like to help people and put them first. I just didn't know I could help people and make, you know, really good money. Mm. 
So like, it, it's it's like it's it's crazy, man. The way that, that things work out, but I already know what I'm gonna do. Mm. This is like I got thirty phone numbers in one day before. Wow. Like that's okay. This is for me. I can I can do this. As you can tell, I like to talk to people. Yeah, you you <laughs> are you good at it though. You're really good at it. But it's not that hard. Anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. Wow. There's a system is designed to turn people from from not knowing anything about what we do, being no background in financial s- services. I don't have any background in it. Uh-huh. I just know how to talk to people, but I don't know how to talk about money. I don't know I didn't I don't know how to become I didn't know any of this stuff. Mm. And I learned all, most of it, well, not most of it, because I learn something crazy that's new every day. So I never say I know most of it. There's always more I'm learning, but I learn something new every day. So you just gotta, you guys gotta accept the fact that you will always be a student. You're never gonna stop learning. There, you'll never be finished. Get that word out of your vocabulary. You're never done. Yeah. Accept the fact that you're a lifetime learner, and then life will make more sense to you. Mm. That's some powerful point right there. And now, where do you see yourself in the next ten years, bro? Ten years? Yep. Ten years? Yeah, bro. Man, ten years from now, I need to be making at least. Okay, ten years, at least, at least a hundred thousand dollars a month. At least a hundred thousand dollars a month. Hmm. Yeah, I'll be forty-six in ten years. Wow. That's yeah, bro. Yeah. I got to be close to retirement. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, with the kind of energy and the potential I can see in you right now, you're gonna you're gonna attain that goal. Just got to keep moving forward. And now I'm trying to wrap up this. Oof. Oh, this has been one of the fastest episodes ever. But anyways. I mean, I was, this is still shorter. We've only been <laughs> we've only been talking for what? We started late too, so we've been talking for like an hour and 10 minutes now. Last time, at this point, we still had another 40 minutes we kept going. You got me until, let me look at my calendar, bro. I'm not letting you get off easy. I promised you I'd deliver as much as I did last time. My next appointment isn't until 8 p.m., and I'm pretty sure she canceled on me. Oh, she canceled she, it. She's not answering the phone. But oh, wow. part of the business, you know, rejection's okay. It's it's not you. It's them. Oh, okay, bro. Since you want us to continue? Bro, come on, man. Okay. I, wa- I, I, I love bringing people value. Okay. Now, let's talk about the establishment. And specifically, what do you see the future of this, of not the, only this country, but the world moving forward? The way it's going right now. Where do I see the establishment or the people? The establishment. It's dying. Dying? Yeah, it's on its last legs. You think so? Yeah. Well, if you take a wo- an animal and it's wounded and cornered, yeah, that's when it's the most dangerous. That's when it starts lashing out and doing the craziest stuff. Uh huh. That's a sign that they're on the ropes. It's not. You shouldn't fear them more because they're doing it. When they're confident, they do everything in secret. They go about, they, you know, business as, as as usual, go nice and slow, nice and quiet. They're trying to do more because they're afraid. Mm. They can feel their grip on uh, on our minds and spirits and bodies slipping away. Mm. So, so they're getting desperate. What? Let's just assume the establishment is doing a lot of a great job right now, controlling people's <laughs> mind. No, no, controlling. Oh, controlling. Mind. Okay. Yeah, controlling people's mind. Now, an average Joe, what should that person be thinking or doing right now? If they, if it was twenty years ago, the average Joe would never even know they're in being controlled. Yeah. They had a total monopoly on the dissemination of information and news around the world. Uh That's why, like, the media used to be the fourth branch of the government. Uh But now because of the Internet, independent media, like, this is it. This is what they are afraid of the most. Uh You know? They shut down Joe Rogan, 10 more will pop up like him. Oh, yeah, definitely, man. It's happening. Yeah. Tucker Carlson, Russell Brand. Mm -hmm. And look at them. Their history. One was super conservative on Fox News, and one is a drug-addicted sex addict from Hollywood. Crazy liberal. (laughs) And both of them are, like, close friends now. Yeah, bro. And that's... you. you, Sometimes you're like, no, that only happens in movie. But it's happening in front of our... The truth is always stranger than fiction. Yeah. Oh, my God, bro. And sometimes when you hear the truth, they always try to sabotage the truth. And Look at Julian Assange. When they sabotage the truth, the average Joe is going to be like, nah, that's not true. You know who Julian Assange is? No, who's that? Do you remember the WikiLeaks um, that happened 10 years ago? That leaked uh, uh, government emails and that, uh, that uh, revealed the... the um, um, laundering of tax money through the Iraq War to Halliburton, you know the DNC's emails are being sh- are being exposed about the way they treated people and manipulated other governments around the world. Yeah. Oh, you got to read about that. 
Julian Assange is like the. You know who Edward Snowden is? Nope. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you have new homework. Yeah, man, I wouldn't take it. There's, out. there's a movie. They made a movie about him. It's uh -huh. called Snowden. Snowden. I don't know if they still have it on Netflix. Um, Dre, look, look, look up and look, look up and see if the movie Snowden uh -huh. is still on uh, Netflix. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna check it out. Yeah, that that movie is really good. But uh, the WikiLeaks was like, then he was the next level. Edward Snowden is the one who revealed that the government and the NSA. We're secretly spying on its own people. Mm. He's the one who revealed that we were spying on our own countrymen. Wow. And then WikiLeaks was on a whole different level. It exposed more of what the government was doing domestically and abroad. And now the United States government's been after this guy ever since. He was hiding in, in the Ecuadorian assembly, uh, embassy in Ecuador. He was trapped there for like six years. Whoa. He's from Australia. He couldn't go home to Australia because Australia would have given him... Huh? Damn, they took it off. Oh. Of course they did, because people are waking up. <laughs> See where you can find that movie. You yeah, know, like uh, movie pirating like apps, whatever you got to do. Yeah, it's a great movie. That one's based on an actual true story, and then you can look up who Edward Snowden was. Mm. But uh, he, you know who he is? He's exiled. He's in Russia. He lives in Russia now. Oh, wow. He can't be here. They'll lock his ass up. Mm. They'll probably kill him. And, Ed, and Julian Assange... He was trapped in the Ecuadorian embassy, and then he got caught. He fin they finally caught him, and he's been locked up in Belmarsh Prison in, in England for like the last seven years. Mm. They're trying to extradite him. The trial is happening right now. Wow. Since, since you, don't, you, you, don't, you want us to have a conversation, what, I want to get your opinion on what's going on now, especially with, with Andrew Tate, and like him being a masculine male, a top G, like you call it, and what what is your perspective or opinion when it comes to someone like that, um, Andrew? He's Tate? just one more person, yeah, saying something he shouldn't. Uh -huh. That has enough of a following for the New World Order to care. Mm. The only reason they don't come after you and me is because we don't have three hundred million people watching us mm. yet. Yeah, that's true. Like, I hope you're ready. <laughs> I'm ready. If you get to where you want to go, they're gonna come for you too. Mm. Hopefully the dragon will be slain, be slain before you blow up. Yeah. But we don't know. Andrew Tate is just... He's, um, he's a classic masculine man. Mm -hmm. And he's very good at what he does as far as generating engagement on the internet. Mm -hmm. He knows how to get people to click or watch or listen. Whether he, they like him or hate him. Yeah, That's why he, has, he dominates attention. Because whether you hate him or love him, you're paying attention, and he's making money when you pay attention. Yeah, a lot of money. He's very, very, very intelligent. Yep. Extremely intelligent person. I respect him. I respect him a lot. Mm. Do you think most of the stuff he says is actually right or not? Nah? I mean, in regards to the importance of masculinity in men? Yeah. Of course, it's absolutely right. Because mm -hmm. when you want to conquer a nation, the, the, the population you have to be worried about the most are the fighting age men. Mm. They're the ones who are going to get up and fight and defend what you're trying to take. Wow. And that's true, though. If you weaken them, then you weaken their defenses and you break them and you can conquer them. That's how Rome fell. Mm. Rome grew so fat and rich that they were having orgies when the barbarians were burning down the city. Mm. Wow. Man, that's pretty deep. I'm going to say this. I mean, I listened to Andrew Tate and I'll. I'm going to say he's really outspoken and he knows how to communicate effectively. Super effectively. He's an effective communicator. The way he talks, man, you just like, oh. And he's so confident. Like, he, any room he walks in, he commands that room. Like, you, you can feel. And just watching, you can just tell that he's, he's in charge. And the establishment don't like that. Because now... He can't be controlled. Yeah, because see, all these guys... Are looking up to him like, oh no, that's our hero right there, and people don't want that. They want to control it. Do you, do you know why they don't like that? Because if what happens if they follow him, mm -hmm. what do they start doing? They start becoming like the real male. becoming like him. Yeah, which means they become what more independent, mm -hmm. more intelligent, yeah, more physically and mentally powerful, uh -huh. more physically and mentally resilient. They become a soldier for righteousness yeah. in the great spiritual war. Because that's where the front line is. And when that happens, like... They no, can't fight that. Yes, you can't control anybody no more. No. And that's a problem. They're always trying to make the guys be feminine weak. and weak. 
and that's a problem, man. But man, I really love Andrew Tate. He's a great guy. I mean, I don't agree with everything he says, though. But sometimes he might say something, and people don't really understand. They misquote him and just want to spread that around. Yeah, if a person hasn't listened, if they quote something he said that they don't agree with, I'm like, did you watch that entire episode? Yeah. Did you listen to the entire conversation? That's then you're missing context. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Because if you really understand his underlying message, you're going to know the underlying message is the right thing. Which is why, more often than not, women actually really like him and respect him. Oh, yeah, now. But back then, they were like, he's a misogynist. What does misogyny mean? Yeah, they like, he don't like women. Yeah, man. And he thinks like women... Are he wouldn't be living the lifestyle he does if he didn't like women. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, for real. That's true. But, man... I'm so glad you came in today, and I want to ask you two more questions. Shoot, bro. And the first question is... I got is, time. <laughs> the first question is... I'm trying to beat your record for the longest episode. <laughs> if if the, if there was one experience you could wipe away from all your experiences, what would it be? An experience I had that if I could... Just take it away. None of them. Why? Because I wouldn't be who I am without all of them. Hmm. That's a, that's a good answer. That's a really good answer. I'm finally getting to a place where I really like who I am, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't be who I am without everything that I've been through or experienced or learned or watched or seen. So why would I... If anything, maybe change timing, but still, it's like, I don't know, maybe if, if uh, you know, like... I always used to say, like, I wish I knew what I knew now uh -huh. when I was 18. Oh, wow. If I did, I would probably already be able to retire by now. Mm. But if you give me, if I made, if I knew what I knew when I was 18 and I made my first million dollars at 25, what would I do with it then? Mm. I could easily ruin my life. 25-year-old with millions of dollars? I don't know. Yeah, that's true. You, Maybe you, I wasn't supposed to be a millionaire until I was in my 40s. <laughs> <laughs> that brings me to my final question. If you were to give an advice to your 18-year-old self, what would it be? Stop doubting yourself. Uh-huh. Be patient. Don't quit. Mm. That's really powerful. Is there anything you want to say to my audience before I end this episode today? Uh, you guys can follow me at Medhani's Art, at Medhani's Art on Instagram. Yeah. Um, you know, DM me if you're interested in anything art related, real estate related, or uh, financial services related. Right now, I'm focused more on finances. I can do a lot more with art. Real estate is more advice. Mm. You know, I can give you, I can tell you more about the industry but as far as executing finances art let's go yeah and we're gonna drop his info on the description below is that all bro you don't want to say anything else to the audience oh you put me on the spot oh yeah yeah uh take everything that anyone ever tells you with a grain of salt and go find out for yourself you know when you hear about what it is like in another country go there mm. unless it's an open war zone go mm. if you're a woman take a partner don't go alone safety first is of course but, you know, start learning to, to be more independent and think for yourself. Yeah, man. And will it thank you for coming to the show today? I don't know how this episode is going to go, but I hope I have been Ron's blueprints after this episode drops. I'm man. sure you will, man. <laughs> if not, if you do, I'll come back and try to get you canceled again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, man. And we really appreciate you guys for tuning in to today's episode. Please do us a favor. Like, share, and subscribe. Remember, we drop an episode every Wednesday. Thank you for tuning in and see you in the next episode. Ben Rollins' blueprint comes to an end. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Thank you.